What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Movie News, your only podcast for your movie news, movie reviews, and more. You know, sometimes we get onto all sorts of different things. Um, yep. Yeah. So, you know, you come here for the banter, you come here for a number of things. It is quite hot here. And everyone on the podcast, you can see that Rhyme and TV merch Hell has come yeah. in. So get around it. It's uh, I'll put the link in the Spotify one as well. So the Q and A, so you can click on that and have our faces. Get your Rhyme and TV shirts, your Rhyme yeah. and TV merch. You get water bottles. That's, you get hoodies. Yeah. Stickers. We'll soon get a, a quotes. So we'll get quotes on the here. We'll mm. have like Lawson's face with the art house guy. And, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I got lots of quotes. I think it would just be me giggling mostly. I yeah, I think we should put like a a calling all quotes request out there to some of our friends because there'd be a few things they've picked up. I reckon. Yeah. So <laughs> send send them through and we'll we'll work it out. But we are on to episode twenty. So we have been gracing your ears for the last <laughs> twenty episodes and eyes if you watch the the podcast. So. Which, yeah. We're getting actually some worldwide viewers. So Belgium, um, I don't know what hello, the Belgium, Belgium hello is. Hello, remember? Yeah, oh, that's right. Uh, we've got a few in <laughs> India. We've got everywhere. We're going to have to learn yeah. some um, greetings <clears throat> for different places so we can do worldwide greetings. But Yeah, well, I think it's yeah. beyond my capacity. <laughs> <laughs> so, Language has never been a strong point of mine, even mate. English. I struggle with English as well, as we all know. (laughs) We do. Yeah. So that's what's part of my charm. But anyway, Mm -hmm. we've got the usual movie news coming up to you. Obviously, with Christmas, it's been a little bit quiet on the old movie front, but, well, the news front. And Mm -hmm. also, actually, cinemas. We walked past the cinemas today and we're like, oh, should we go see a movie? And there's not much out. I think, like, especially, yeah. There's normally some kid movies that come out because it's school holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's Lyle, Lyle the Crocodile, which looks okay, okay. but sure. it doesn't, doesn't look great. Obviously, Avatar is a big draw card. Do you know it's some o- boots at the moment? Yeah, and you put some boots, but I feel like that franchise has kind of died in terms of the whole, yeah, the whole Shrek. Because what is there? Four yeah. Shreks, five Shreks. I'd, I've lost track. I didn't watch any after like two, I think. Yeah, two was good. I quite liked two. One and two were good. Yeah. Mm. Sure. I need a hero. I love that montage. It's such a good yeah. montage. Yeah. You're and about then... to say, did you know something with Avatar? Oh, yeah. I digress because then I was going on to the... I, uh... I distracted you. Yeah, yeah. I interrupted as always. <laughs> the, the one line of like Shrek forever after or whatever. Do the raw. <laughs> the raw. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that meme plenty of times, but yeah. not the actual movie. And I, I use that joke a lot for my shorts if yeah. you're on Rhyme and TV, especially. It's good. It's <laughs> for anything good. Anything that roars. And, you know, um, Avatar. You know? Yeah, Avatar has only made <laughs> 1 billion so far and needs right. to make 2 billion to be able to break even. That's a yeah, lot of money. Nearly a month in box office now. They won't now. I don't know. I reckon yeah. they will. I reckon they, there was a lot of people lining up today. At the cinemas okay. when we walk past, but they could have been seen. I guess a lot the Christmas, like the holiday season's over. Everyone's done with all the holiday stuff. They're probably getting out and about now. Yeah, it's in that dead week between like Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, and they're like people aren't normally back. Some are starting to go back next week, mm-hmm. so they still got a week to go. So I reckon they'll get yeah. there, but I don't okay. know that they're going to get there for three and four. Like they're they're following. Films. No, if that's the goal, it's not going to happen. There's no way. No, especially when two is not getting good reviews, but we Mm. will have that for you next week and we'll be the judges of that. So, you know, yes, yeah, get your uh, movie news from us instead. Ear holes ready. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds so aggressive. (laughs) (laughs) So, get them ready. All right. But, yep. Without further ado, let's uh, drum roll. Use me up, boy. Yeah. Movie news. That's that's yep. what I've got for today. You know, mm-hmm. we have we haven't settled on it. We should get sound bites. We should do something a little yeah. bit more fancier. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the inconsistency is our consistency. That's right. It keeps them coming in. <laughs> hey, we've yep. been consistent with a, a podcast a week, so get yeah. around us. That's big. And 
a person that we a director we did speak about last week quite a number of times is M Night Shyamalan. Oh hell yeah! What's yeah. he doing? He has a new trailer that's just dropped with Knock oh. at the Cabin <laughs> raises the stakes. So this is M Night Shyamalan horror thriller, which has the guy who's right behind you in Glass Onions. I can't remember his name, but he also Dave plays, Batista. Yeah. Oh, he's- Fucking love him. <laughs> yeah, so he's in it. And also Rupert, I can't remember his name, but played Ron in Harry Potter. Rupert Grint. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's got those two in it, which okay, an, an interesting mix. I wasn't an apocalyptic psychological horror. Look, mm. I, I'm excited for anything M. Night. He, okay. because he's, he's, he's tragic now. Like mm. he's everything he do, does or makes or whatever. Writes, directs, he it's bad. I don't know how he's gone from like sixth sense, really. You know, like it, it was obvious he knew what he was doing there to making shit like, oh, what's the fucking one with um, I didn't mind Marky signs, Mark? signs wasn't terrible, that was probably not bad as well. But then everything from there, like the village was terrible. Um, I thought the village atmosphere Mark. was pretty good, they built it up, but then the reveal sucked. Like, I was, I the felt real sucked. disappointed. And after the reveal sucked, it made everything else sour as well. Like, you start pulling apart the rest of the story. Like, why the fuck were they making those noises if they were just humans? Yeah. Um, yeah. Point is, I'm excited for anything he does. Uh, it on. You'd hope he'd be able to, like, get better or learn from no. mistakes. <laughs> Avatar was <laughs> shocking. Like, shocking the airbender live action. Yeah, oh, we didn't, even, we didn't even talk about that. I didn't that even was... get past 15 minutes, I reckon. I reckon. I think it's about the same. Yeah. I remember watching it pretty soon after it came out and being like, what the fuck is this? Before yeah. it was torn to shreds, you know, before it was the meme that it is now. Still, even then, was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Anyway. And point is, I'm excited. Yes, bring it on. Yep. M night, let's go. So we are a little bit light on news, but I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but James Cameron has had discussions about another Terminator movie. You did? Yeah, I mentioned yep. that last yep. week. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you know the show <coughs> Luther, Lucifer? The uh, Lucifer, yep. Yeah, yeah. that's <sighs> that's getting a movie. Oh, sorry. The Fool and Son. <laughs> so they're going to oh, okay. TV show and now a movie. It seems to be like everyone's getting a movie. I can see lots of it's happening with anime at the moment as well. So like they'll mm-hmm. run to a certain point and then it'll be like, we're going to close out with a movie. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Is It's not really what I want, but I'm not sure if no, I did. I like happy with it. I'd rather you just continue out and like finish the story. Yes. Like, like what I want. If you can tell it the story in a movie, why can't you tell it in like four or five episodes of anime? Yeah, the only the only one that better. has done it really well was um, Demon Slayer in terms of the anime. Sure. So um, I I can't relate, but yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, glad that, to hear it. That, that was awesome. I reckon you definitely should get on that. It's very very good. I enjoyed well, I it. I should get on. I enjoyed it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and Put yeah, good things. Yeah. Well, so director Mike Hodges dies at ninety. Who's that? So he's a British film director. Passed away at 90. That's pretty solid. That's a good innings. Uh, what Mike do you Hodges, do? Flash yes. Gordon, creepy A. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so good innings. Yep. Good on him. Yeah. May he rest in peace. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Good, good <laughs> stuff. Good innings, mate. Yeah. All right. So now that, we, now that you know that all your movie news is all caught up, we're going mm-hmm. to move into one of the top 10 Netflix films at the moment, which is Glass Onions, a Knives Out mystery. So I hadn't actually seen Knives Out, so I had to. I watched Knives Out and then Glass Onion pretty much one day and then the next day. Yeah, And I've got to <clears> say, <throat> this genre of the whodunit is not my thing. It never has been. I've never liked Cluedo. That's so, fair. Like, it's, it's never been... <clears throat> my sort of thing like my mum used to love them like she used to watch a lot of the the murder yeah, mystery same. stuff and I sort of occasionally would sit there for a little bit just to be polite yeah. and then I'd be like oh, I just gotta go to the toilet and I'd sneak off and go do yep. something else yeah 
yeah. yeah. So yeah, I got the same watching all those like Alias and fucking all the NCIS shows and all that sort of shit. I like those ones. I just don't like the 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 murder party kind of thing where they were like oh in the one. I don't like that sort of who done it kind of scenario. Same with like oh, okay. uh, murder on the Orient Express. Like I don't like sure sure those kind of ones. those ones specifically. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can't see actually seen a lot of that like that exact story. But yeah, I guess there are things. So there was there was one I think it's called literally called Murder Mystery with Adam Sandler and um um, um what the fucking name horrible bosses Jennifer Aniston. Um, right. They're in that something else similar as well, which was wasn't bad. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, I haven't actually seen a lot of this genre. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. I'm just I'm not keen on this genre. But so uh, Glass Onions, uh, Knives Out Mystery is famed Southern detective Blank travels to Greece for his latest case. Like it all revolves around obviously a mystery, and this guy is essentially well the detective. Blank yeah. is the the person he's going to solve it. Yeah, he's a blank. That's it's blank. No. Not sure. No, no. Benoit blank. Blanc. Ah, wow. it always sounded as blank. Ah, uh, so these these group of people who uh originally started all out as pretty much just your average meal, run of the day kind of people, uh, mm-hmm. brought to this island because they're friends of uh, what's his name. Miles Bron. Miles Bron, which is Edward, Edward Norton. Norton. So mm-hmm. I thought he did a pretty good job of being the eccentric, kind of like rich, I guess. Yeah, the Elon Musk of. type. Yeah, he did a quite mm-hmm. quite a good job. Um, yeah, he he invites all of his his crew to come for the weekend, and they have to solve this murder mystery, yeah. which turns out that it was wasn't a murder mystery. And then becomes a murder mystery later yeah, on. Yeah, the the murder mystery of the weekend was solved in minutes by uh, Benoit Blanc, Daniel Craig's character. I like that little scene. That was very like Sherlock of him, just yeah. like bam, bam, bam. These are all the facts, and then <laughs> the little arrow goes off and hits Edward Norton in the chest. And yeah, it was a funny, funny little moment. Yeah. So You're right. yes, but the real mystery is. Please continue. Yeah, so then there is a real mystery. It felt too complex in terms of what they were trying to go with in terms of the story. Like, yeah. I would have preferred just your standard someone dies and then he has to solve it. But then there yeah. was uh, the sister. Um, so, what was her name? Un- Andy? Andy. Andy. Green. Yeah. yeah. So, she was, she her sister died. And these uh, was framed in terms of um, Edward Norton's character Miles took the yeah. business of this. I mean, quick, quick step back. She she was one of the founding members of the business that Edward Norton became a billionaire from. It was called Alpha, um, and she was through some legal loophole was written out of the business by Edward Norton's character. Um, she has a twin sister, who we find out. The midway point twist, and this is spoiler territory from here on because that's where, the point we're at in the story. After we see all the events play out, like an hour at the um, this fucking island, um, our characters, one of our main characters dies, Dave Batista's character, who's playing a guy called Duke. He dies, um, then everyone goes into a panic, and we then see um, Andy get shot. And then we go bloop, 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 back in time when we we see all the actual story unfold. Take it away. Yeah, so there's so many like twists and turns. Like just when you think, yep, I know what's going on, mm-hmm. yeah, they like give you another twist. There's another thing that happens. I do like how they show all the different perspectives as it goes on. Yep. Like I think they did yep. a really good job. Like there's a scene where Duke is like sort of creeping through some trees and he sees something, but we don't see it at that point in time. And we actually get two different scenes of that perspective of like what's happening in the time. It's like Whiskey and Miles. Yes. Having that conversation, a bit of, you know, Whiskey's trying to 
build her personal image and needs miles mm-hmm. to get Duke back onto like some big numbers in terms of he yep, was yep. banned from Twitch and then moved to YouTube and wants to get him into more mainstream media, but it was like alpha news or something or other or some, yeah, some stupid, whatever news thing he was running. Yeah. yeah. So she's trying to work that angle for her own benefit where yep. Duke is obviously not in ear range. So he's like seeing obviously whiskey and miles sort of getting it on. And then you've mm-hmm. got, the, the third he also the, the twist turns out that he wants them to get it on because if whiskey gets in the good books with miles and so does duke yeah sort of i don't know it was yeah got, got it was like a, a double bit, reveal yeah you got too convoluted for me as it went yeah. on but then yeah, there's another sad. scene where you got uh blanc or blank whatever however you want to pronounce it <laughs> and then you've also got um andy as well they both pop out behind the trees and have a look just to they're sort of investigating at mm-hmm. the same time. And then mm-hmm. you've got all the different interworkings of blank making distractions so that Andy can go search and work out what's going on. And this is lots of different things all happening. Yeah. I feel like yeah. a number of clues that were there, whiskey was around and I don't know, I got a little bit distracted when whiskey was on screen and I, I missed a few like little details here and there. <laughs> like, Why? Because... It's, she had a lot of screen presence for me. <laughs> she had screen presence. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's glorious. So How perfect. How fitting. I think that's a, a nice way to put it, I think. <laughs> How fitting. Yeah. Yeah. I think um I think like you say, that was a really cool part of when they did the flashbacks. Cause there's all these times where you see, you know, four out of the seven characters interacting. And you never really ask, well, what's the other three characters doing? But it was nice when they went back and, and did the little flashbacks um, that they're able to sort of fill in those gaps. I didn't even think about, like, of course, she could be anywhere. She could be doing anything. Everybody's there except for Andy. Andy could be doing anything. Um, turns out it was Hel- <coughs> Helen, her actual sister. <clears throat> Sorry, sort of tickling my throat. Um, yeah, you're right. That was really cool. That was probably the element I liked most of the flashbacks. And how they were filling in all those little gaps, and I liked the way we found out information that way, and how we were sort of told the story. I think it was spoon fed a little too much. I think there were some moments where I was like, "Yeah, I figured that out already." And I think most audiences would at certain points. I'm not a fucking super genius, um, but I think all in all, yeah, you're right. Really, really good. That that story writing part, the back and forth, and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I think it did a, it did a quite a reasonable job in terms of how they tied everything in, which is generally a downfall to these kind of shows. Like if your de- reveals and your your plot yep. points are all like just a mess, this is not going to work what like at all. Mm-hmm. Where they did a reasonable job, I got to say with Duke's character, what's going on with his head? Like I've his he- oh with his wrinkles on his head, yeah. It seems yeah, but has a weird head. It's it's odd. Is it just his head in terms it's of his like... head? That's that's Dave Batista's actual head. Right. Like, it looks like a fucking elephant's ear. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was so confused. And then I saw after I watched it, I saw so many of like people just <laughs> commenting about it. How it's his just... head's always looked, but there was some there were some shots in this where it like <laughs> it was almost accentuated. <laughs> Yeah, they like zoomed in on. I don't know why. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got a fucked up head. I'm not sure yeah. where that's come from. Whether it's you know steroids or wrestling or what, but he's got a weirdly wrinkly, like not not wrinkly, but like bumpy head. Yeah, it's odd. like ridges. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like you can you can see his brain, like his skin yeah. is wrapped around parts of his brain. His, his brain, yeah. So well, maybe know. where um. There was also a number of characters. I felt like some of them were like um, Kate Hudson's character, Birdie. I thought she was a bit too generic in terms of she oh, was really. I thought I thought she was probably my favorite character. Really, was that, yeah. she had the most presence. She had a fun character. Yeah, well, I already said who's got the most presence for me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think Batista had the most presence. Every scene he was in, he was funny as. Yeah. He's like in the pool. He jumps out like. Got his gun on his hip, just like flies it off. <laughs> just the epitome of douchebag media. 
Yeah, it um, was pretty funny. <clears throat> yeah, I a lot of what I was annoyed with when I, when I was watching this was just how they told. You know, we we see we see these scenes play out in Act One where we we're just finding out the information for the first time, and then later in Act Two when we're actually putting all the pieces together and we're being we're being re shown old scenes, they would sometimes show us like seconds, maybe even five to fifteen seconds of information that were in between two shots we we just saw. It's like it's almost like you know when you watch a movie and you you almost it's meant to be as if you're a fly on the wall watching this actual real life scene play out but when you show us the same scene earlier with extra information added in it's like well what the fuck where'd that come from you you're intentionally withholding information from us in the first the first viewing that when you show you the replay or the, the reviewing you just you're just adding stuff in like why didn't we see that before I don't know it's just convenience but I think that to me was it's it was lazy in, in its writing at some times um I think a movie like this comes across as really clever but when you're reverse writing it when you're writing it from the from the with knowing the twists and then you're writing in all the little twists it's not as clever as I think it is and this movie is getting its fucking dick sucked online everyone's saying it's fantastic and that it's amazing writing and the characters are so fun and I don't see the hype. I think this, it was a fun ride. And I, I'd probably say, yeah, go watch it. It's interesting. Like the twists and turns are like enough to make you go, oh, that's interesting. But it's not a fucking masterpiece. People are putting it up there as like the best movie of the year and all this other bullshit. And it's like, yeah, it's okay, but it's not, it's not spectacular. There's no. way better movies than this out. It's, it's shot well, though. It's shot well. It, it's got a, quite a yeah. solid cast so people get around it like there's, exactly. there's lots of things going for it it's on netflix yeah. like people got access to it so it's, it's going shot pretty but i don't think it's shot well like it's it's not cinematic it's just it's not done poorly like exactly that's that's what it's going for it's not done poorly the color grading is nice but i don't think like it's not smart and clever in its filming unless i just didn't pick up on stuff yeah well Unless you kind of like the who done it sort of films as well, that's probably a big draw card. Like I've seen some. No, I like are, mysteries that are quite dull. Like Mum used to watch a lot of the UK ones, and a few sure. of them were like pretty, pretty, pretty slow and tedious. Can you use some names? I'm trying to recall stuff. No, I cannot because I never oh. uh, <clears throat> never pay attention. That's never bothered. Very fair. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But like no, I'm not sure was, I've actually there was some jokes that were a little bit forced, like quite a lot. Like they forced the COVID stuff at the start in terms of yeah. when when they were in isolation. I just you're forcing it to be I guess modern or whatever, modern, yeah. yeah. Like I don't yeah. know. <clears throat> Especially when he was playing. It didn't need to be set at that time. And he was playing Among Us with other people in the bathtub. He was in yeah. isolation. Like they were forced to wear masks, and then the bloke shot him with some random, like, Which massive is gun. Really violent. <laughs> it's, and then he's like, "No, nah, you're all good now." Mm-hmm. Like, like I, what's in this thing? No, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then it was just when um, spoilers, but when Duke's character dies with the pineapple juice. And he's like, no, yeah. that's just dumb. Like there's yeah. the whole the whole reveal and he's he just got so mad because it's so dumb. And that was one of those when when they said he died and they were like, Oh, but what did he die from? I was like, Oh, pineapple. They mentioned it. And that was the thing, like, once this movie starts showing you things from earlier, like these little non sequiturs, you're like, Oh, okay. So every little non sequitur now has a purpose. And then you start finding things. So yeah, by the time there were, they had this massive build up to that too. That joke of it, or not the joke, but when they tried to reveal that it was pineapple juice, um, I'm sitting sitting there going, yeah, pineapple, yeah, dude, it was pineapple. Wait for the pineapple, okay. And then you still drag it out, okay, cool. Well, it was probably pineapple, and lo and behold, it was pineapple. And that's yeah, the movie got a little bit tired, and I got a little bit tired of the movie at the end. Yeah, yeah. being negative, it's fucking hot yeah. in here. <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm just, I'm not a fan of these these films. Like, I can see why people would yeah. like them, 
I can see why people kind of like the who done it with the mysteries and the twists and the turns. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it was reasonably well acted. Like I think they all did a yeah. pretty good job. There was not none mm-hmm. that I was kind of like, what are you doing? There was that random bloke that was like just randomly staying at who? the yeah, I wondered, I was going to ask you that. Was he in the first Knives Out? Because he feels like a reference. I I didn't pick up on who it was. I thought he was just a, a comic relief character that he was like Norton's mate. He was like... Yeah, he's and he's like, oh, he's going through some stuff and he's just wandering around. But yeah. that was the biggest red herring because the whole movie, I'm like, well, who the fuck's this stranger? Is he going to have anything to do with any of the crime stuff that's going on? No. Nah. Well, that was he literally just there to make you think is it him like i forgot that he was even around majority of the time though exactly that felt like a really strange addition i don't <laughs> I didn't really see the purpose of that character no it was odd but yeah i don't know it made me laugh though the scene oh, where hey. he's like in the in the room then um andy or, or helen comes in looking for the the red envelope and he's like hey you want to hang out <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, yeah, but what the fuck? Who was he? Why was yeah. he there? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say Knives Out was better than this one. Okay. Like, I, I like Knives Out better. Have you seen oh. the, the first one? No, no, I didn't bother. No. Okay. Yeah. So, so you think it's better? Okay. Yeah, I liked That's it better. Good. I felt like it was a bit more of a, a mystery rather than this. I think, yep. I think the first act where it was like where Blanc sort of solves it and it's like it's not really a crime and then mm-hmm. it becomes a crime. I was like, oh, I've sort of taken out of where this is, where the sure. other one, the first film is your standard, like this is a crime. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah, Sherlock style. Yeah. Yeah, I guess because I'd seen the trailer, I knew that was, because in the trailer they're like, what starts as a fake murder mystery ends up having to solve a real murder or some bullshit, you know? Yeah. Um. So I sort of knew that going into it, I guess. But yeah, yeah but that was where like I, I liked the first act where he was playing with the characters and learning things and and then it just went kind of boring. And at the end I was I was kind of sick of the twists and how big brained it thought it was. And I'll rate it. I think if you are into uh murder mystery stuff and, and you're into some big fun characters, then watch it. It's probably gonna be a three for you, maybe even more. But it's a two and a half. I can't recommend it. I think that it's boring and thinks it's smarter than it was. Uh, and while it's a pretty, I mean, there are moments where it was fun, right? And some of the comedy is pretty well written. Um, it's not enough. Not enough. Yeah. Also, it. the ending was real. It, she, everyone just went nuts and burnt the place down. Yeah. No shit. It was, uh, and. Okay. There was a weird thing, like I found it weird as shit that after um, you know, the world came crashing around him and oh the line where they which is like, and now people are gonna remember your name with the Mona Lisa. Like that felt so shit. <laughs> um but no one, like this is the moment where all these people who have spent their lives worshipping this guy more or less have just found out they've murdered that he has murdered one of their friends and family members. And they're all just sitting around like, oh, what a day. Like, no one is, like, yelling at him. No one's like, you're a fucking asshole. They're, no one's... I wanted the moment where everyone's, like, realize what's happened and they're all just against smiles. And they don't need to, like, beat him up or anything. But I wanted that moment of, like, that that bitterness in his mouth. Like, you're seeing everyone who worshipped him at the start of the film now just, like, smashing him verbally about being a little rat. But it, it, we didn't get that. I wanted that payoff. With his character, yeah, yeah, it was a rant. Yeah. <laughs> I think mean, it was it was an odd ending, and then they were just like, "Oh, I saw him do this. I did also saw him do mm-hmm. this." Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, I mean, it's like Deadpool they, Society. Yeah, I mean, they stayed true to their characters in terms. They all seemed to be weaselly little anything yeah. to advance my career. Like, I don't really yeah, care what heads. happens to you. Yeah, Andy calls them shitheads. Yeah, sorry, Helen keeps saying Andy, but it's actually Helen. Yeah, so her twin sister. Yeah, whatever. It was for me. This movie is a two. Like, mm. I I personally wouldn't recommend it. There were moments where I had like some some fun with it, but overall, yeah. I just I hate. I don't enjoy these type of movies. I don't really yeah. like the mysteries that much. 
I don't mind it when it's kind of like the watcher or like those kind of mysteries or like American horror story kind of yep. Yep. mystery sort of styles, but not like who done it. You're all in one area. <laughs> I don't, I don't enjoy it. I can see why That's people fair. would like it. So if you do like that, you, you definitely probably going to enjoy these, like these films there. Exactly. I felt like it was just, they had a textbook and they were like, all right, let's run every cliche mm-hmm. we can in terms of this genre. And they, mm-hmm. they hit them. They hit them with yeah. some eccentric characters, which yeah, for the masses will be appealing. Yeah, and it is. People are loving it, but it's average at best. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving on from that. We're going on to Matilda. The musical. So I wasn't actually prepared that this. I know it was the musical, but I wasn't prepared for this to be for a musical. Be musical. I don't know. <laughs> I just I, I wasn't prepared. Like okay. I don't know. I as a kid, I really enjoyed the original live action Matilda. Like Definitely. I enjoyed it. I like Roald Dahl's um, story. I'll correct you once, and that that'll do it. Roald Dahl. Nope. Nope. There we go. It, He's Continue. on a roll. He's say on a roll. You like. I just want to also make it known that I actually do know how to say it. No. He's <laughs> on a roll with his stories, and that's why he's rowing. He's rowing. What? You, it's down. different. I don't know. Doesn't it's, matter. Just say whatever you want. Yeah, we know what we mean. Yeah. This is just this is just what the the rhyminess, the rhyminess yeah. of the yeah. show. That's that's it's my channel. I can do what I want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you can't do it here. Where can you do it? Exactly. I mean, I do it everywhere <laughs> I go. I'm just All right, where's a, he rolling? He's rolling. So he's he rolling is. into a musical at the moment. So <laughs> <laughs> this is an adaptation of Tony Ad Oliver's award-winning musical. Matilda tells the story of an extraordinary girl who, armed with a sharp mind and a vivid imagination, dares to take a stand to change her story with miraculous results. Nice. So i got to say, I... It's it's a bit of a weird mixture. I like okay. the casting of Matilda for okay. the Matilda parts. I didn't like the casting of Matilda. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. When, when Matilda had to sing. Oh, really? I didn't like her when she was singing. I thought really? she did she did a great job as Matilda. Uh, like just... you didn't like her voice, or you didn't like? I did. I didn't like her singing. I didn't feel like. She uh, she didn't feel for me to have that confidence that when she was singing, where she had the confidence when she was like just going about her day to day, sort of. Yeah, right. I'm a very neglected child. I want to escape into my books. I want to, you know, mm-hmm. do all the different things. But I just didn't like her when she was performing. I wanted like more. Interesting. Like, with musicals, I want. Pretty much over the top. Like I want you to give it your all when you're yeah singing. I th- I, and I thought she did. I, I thought she was actually fucking fantastic. No, nah, my my standout is the little chubby boy. That's probably not the correct way to say it, but I can't remember his name. Oh, with his fake fat suit. Yeah, especially so, right at the end where the, the big dance number and he starts singing. Uh, I had a great time with that one. I yeah, and that last song. <laughs> Yeah, which that is was awesome. oh, I wanted to save it, but fuck that song is a banger. I listened to it so many times on YouTube. <laughs> that end song is so good. Yeah, like I, the dance and the choreography, mm. really good, really Fucking... really stylish. Yeah, real good. And um, do we really need to touch on the story in terms of because the story is so well known? Um... Can I touch on the differences really quick? Because this, this to yeah. me was was where, because it was there were differences, and I, I should start by saying this is actually based on a stage musical written by Tim Mitch and, and someone else. Um, this is not directly based on. It's not a musical based on the movie or Raoul Dahl story. This is a TV adaptation of a stage musical, which is loosely based on. Matilda story. So there are differences. And I so guess I didn't know that. Would you say they're on a roll? It. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> I didn't know that going into it. Um, and there were certain scenes I was looking forward to that weren't reached. So I mean, just not to like won't go into all the details, but basically this story um tells us 
a different story of Miss Honey. Well, not different, but slightly more detail. Um, there's an added character of uh, this librarian. And as the story goes, Matilda is making up this story, telling this story to this librarian. And it's almost like she's omniscient in some way. And we later find out that the story that she's been making up and telling is actually the story of Miss Honey's life and her dad, Magnus, being a escapologist, which is her made up word that she heard from her dad uh, about him being like a Houdini st- style escape artist um, and her mom, who was an acrobat and this whole made up performance. And it all turned out to be real because of all that addition to the story. There were certain things that had to take away from the story. And my favorite and probably one of the most standout scenes in the original 1995 or whatever it is version um, is the scene where Matilda goes to um, Trunchbull's house and she's like sneaking around the house and she's using her powers to like rescue the doll and all this other and like two chocolates and all that sort of stuff. That's one of my favorite scenes because it's like super high intensity. It's really scary. You feel for the kid as a kid watching that. I used to panic. That scene's totally removed. And a lot of the scenes where it's like little nice nuances between Miss Honey um, and Matilda. Miss Honey only ever meets the family once. Um, and before she even, she, Miss Honey has no idea what the home life is like. So because of these little adaptations, I felt like at the end, when Matilda was being rescued by Miss Honey and, and she ends up leaving her family and her family run away for whatever reason doesn't matter i didn't feel like it was as deserved in this version because of those changes so while the story wasn't a big difference and it still followed the same story beats you know she goes to a bad school miss trunch was a chokey teacher rescues her whatever she can move things with her mind while all that stuff stayed the same i think the subtle changes actually took away from the story a little bit so i wanted to make mention of that okay. <laughs> thank you for letting yeah. me have a big rant there. That's fair. <laughs> um, you definitely felt for Matilda. I thought the parents, the the Wormwoods, obviously Mister and Missus, thought mm. they casting wise they did a really good job of being yeah, he was great. terrible parents. Uh huh. <laughs> both so both, them, both of them did great. I really enjoyed um, Trenchbull, and mm. did you know that she? Was, Emma Thompson. Yeah, was um in Harry Potter. She was the yeah the She's wacky yeah the wacky um mm-hmm. what is it the herb teacher. Yep, so, the herbologist. Yeah. yeah, she's in like Love Actually, um, Sense and Sensibility. She's in she's heaps. She's in fucking heaps. She's yeah. a legend. She was awesome as Trenchbull, especially the scene yeah. where they well um, Matilda and Trenchbull have their first kind of like. I guess mental battle, where they're all in mm-hmm. the um in the court, not the courtyard, but the outside area, and they yep. hid, hid the kid underneath the, yeah, the yeah. jackets, and mm-hmm. they were, they made reference earlier about Trenchbull like swinging a kid by a, whatever like the ponytails, yeah, the pigtails, yeah. and they're like, yeah. no, teachers wouldn't actually do that. Like she can't actually touch us. And then next minute. <laughs> Next minute she does, and the whole thing yeah. that she was a ex, um, uh, like Olympian or whatever. I'm a thrower. For, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there's that the whole like PE was so dreaded, and like you see her doing. Yeah, and PE, we saw it, and she mm-hmm. like comes in is just steamrolling kids, and yeah, it's like a military fucking camp, uh, yeah. with, like military course and stuff. And I liked all those additions. Trunchbull's such a fun character. They fleshed her out a bit more in this. Um, every scene with Emma Thompson as Trunchbull was just fucking great. She had some amazing musical numbers. Her scenes were like really powerful. Um, she was brilliant. One of the best parts, I reckon. Yeah, she was awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Also, Hunt, Miss Honey, you also felt for her. Like you, you felt that everyone was scared of Trunchbull. Like yeah. you see the fear. Like when uh, Miss Honey wants to go, say that Matilda needs to be like put up and advanced because she's doing like the adult math mm-hmm. problems on the board mm-hmm. and you can see like how like timid she is to go and even say that yeah it's like really good atmosphere building like definitely all the songs are great like i don't think there was a song where i was like um 
just sort of no through the motions, which is I think a couple were a bit long, like the one where where Miss Honey's singing at her house about her house being good enough for her. Really sweet song, but a little bit too long. A couple of moments like that, but you know, all the songs were fucking slapped. I mean, oh, that end song. I said it before, but fuck. That's good. I'm listening to it again right now. I mean, the movie's long in in itself. It's what two it is. two hours. And it's a bit over two. Yeah, for for a kids' film like I watched it with my kids, they they drifted off about hour and twenty. That's mark. fair. That's like, fair. I was kind of almost the same. It was just the musical numbers towards the mm-hmm. end really get you up and up and about. And that's what you yeah. want. Like if they were able to condense this, but I think if they condensed it any more, because it obviously if it is an adaptation of a stage show, the stage show would be what three hours with an intermission. So you'd have like a 15, mm. 20 minute break. Scene changes and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you'd have a little bit more of that that downtime to to then re-engage where if you condense this down to like an hour and a half, which I think mm. would have been a more impactful ride rather than the really stretch. But I think you wouldn't get the same delivery in terms of fleshing out yeah. those characters. So yes, if they if they if they took anything out, I'd rather them add things that I think are lacking rather than be shorter. You know, like I still feel like even then mm, so it's weird. Know. It's it's a weird thought. Like you, I guess. I think it's it's really good, but there's just those it little is. things to be able to. What what would be better? It'd be like, would you reduce some of the character development and reduce it, or would you extend it to be able to mm. flesh flesh some more out in terms of what is presented in their actual musical? Yeah, I think because, like, if anyone if anyone hasn't seen the first Matilda, I wouldn't say we well, watch this first i think i almost feel like you have to have the first matilda in mind when you watch this version um because of that yeah I, I, you're right maybe they should have just gone down a road of giving us new stuff and don't waste time on old stuff because it definitely doesn't feel it it does feel like its own story but i think the impact that the story had was some nostalgia as well yeah so i don't know if that's I'm in two minds about that. I don't know what they're doing. But yeah. But overall, really good. Music's great. I think shot really mm-hmm. well. I like how the scenes actually do change. Like you get that sort of darkness when you're inside. Like it feels yeah. like it feels like a prison for the kids. Yeah. And that's what their perspective would be. That's how Trenchable would run it. I like the the costume designs, like they everything looks in place oh, yeah. in terms of where it is. And mm. Like the school when, looked fantastic. Yeah. And like yeah. everything that came about, everything you felt for Matilda. I just didn't yep. like her when she was singing, but I can forgive that. Interesting. Like, I think she did a really good job as Matilda and escaping mm-hmm. to that book world. I did lose yep. a little bit of interest in terms of how many times they went and revisited the uh, story and like they fed you a little bit more information each yeah. time. Like, I agree. I feel like that could have been condensed or like as soon as it was revealed the that it was the stepmother, I was like, well, yep. that's the connection for Miss Honey. Miss Honey, yeah, definitely. Like, we don't need to revisit it, but they revisit it a number of times. You're after right. That. Yep, yep. So, and that they're the parts I think could have been, like you said, reduced a little bit to either make it shorter or to make room for things that we're missing. But, yeah, there was too much of that. Like it interesting we got a new a new perspective we hadn't seen that point of view and sort of the life of magnus before miss honey was born um but yeah because of, you are right like they were, they dragged for sure yeah so you could have got rid of them i don't know but overall i had a great time i had a great Same. time with this yeah and that's everyone big, watch it again big cool coming from you because you're not normally a uh, musical fan no no i'm not i think um musicals are often really boring and in their storytelling um whereas this like the the musical moments were the greatest moments whereas sometimes i feel like you watch a musical and it gets to a song and you're like okay well now i gotta sit through this half for three minutes before i can listen to more story like spirited um, was it spirited uh, yeah 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 spiritual like that at a lot of points for sure did you ever watch um, uh, the greatest showman or high school musicals yes. and all them 
Uh, I'd seen High School Musical three. I think it's the only one I've seen. Maybe one. Maybe one as well. Yeah. Um, I got kicked out of the cinemas at two, <laughs> like really, really early. Really? So I didn't bother. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're just like we're dicking around, throwing popcorn and stuff. You know. There's more of a story there. It's not an exciting story. We were just we we're in a cinema. We were teenage boys wasting time in a country town. We went to the movies. We were throwing Maltesers and popcorn like four minutes in, laughing at every little joke. Um, oh. We got asked to leave. We're like, well, fine, we're, we're bored here anyway. So we left. Yeah, right. That's all. <laughs> it's a very exciting story. <laughs> and that was for number two. I, no, I'm pretty sure that was two. Yeah. Yeah, right. I've seen all of three. Wow. Two. I remember watching two on the actual Disney channel. Like, I thought it was. It was three then. I don't think it ever got to the cinemas, but okay, it, it was three. I, I really I, can't remember. I feel like they probably would have went. The first one was so successful, we'll do a theatre release. Let's have a look what year they came out. Yeah, so I, enjoy, I did enjoy them. And they got some catchy uh, catchy songs as well. Oh, yeah. There's still songs that come to mind from them. Yeah, Get Your Head in the Game. 2007? That'd be about right. Yeah. I think it might have come to our cinema in Wyala. Yeah, right. <laughs> 2007 was my, what, year year 11? Yeah, that's about right. We're probably, okay. yeah, year 11, going to the movies, dicking around. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. My first year of yeah. uni. Unexciting. <laughs> you old boy. Yep. Um, okay, a couple, couple of points I got, I guess. I liked that um, Matilda in this was I I initially wrote that she was more mischievous, but she wasn't so much mischievous, but she was very fixated on fairness and justice, um, which she had those moments in the original as well, but it wasn't as strong of a theme in, I think, the original movie, um, which I liked. Like, everything she did was all about, like, getting payback, getting fair. Um, She had the line, if two wrongs don't make a right unless they do, and then you've made a right out of two wrongs. And what's better than that? And I kind of like that point of point of view, because if, if you can make a right out of two wrongs, then, I mean, look, maybe, maybe two wrongs do make a right. Um, because this was adapted from a stage show, we didn't get to see any of the parents outside of the house. Like everything was through Matilda's perspective. I really liked in the first movie where Matilda goes to work with her dad for a day and we see him, you know, rigging the cars and doing all these dodgy things and we, we're shown how much of a dodgy person he is rather than just being told how much dodgy person he is. I feel like we missed out on a lot of that with that character. Um, the voiceover often reminded us of things that we didn't need to be reminded of. Like these, there was moments where we'd get these like echoes of her memory from scenes that happened like four minutes ago. Like, yeah, obviously we, we, we aren't that dumb. Um, I really like though that because it was a stage production first, that they used a lot of stage lighting. Like there's moments where she was singing and they would use a light change rather than a scene change to show her going from singing to not singing, like that sort of reality shift. Um, that was cool. Um Yeah, I think in all it was pretty good. I, I had a really fun time. Uh, I'm still looking through my notes here, but I think, yeah, in all I've said, most what I want to say. Sorry? What would you give it? it? I reckon it's a four. I think it was um, it was entertaining from start to finish. Like, even though it was t- two hours, it was quite long, I guess. Um, I Besides the scenes, like you said, with her telling the story and whatever, those scenes were a bit of a drag. But I think the rest of it was paced really well. The songs were bangers. The choreography was insane. The last song brought a tear to my eye. I was so fucking amped up. Um, I like, as soon as the movie finished, I went back to that scene and watched it again. Um, some of it's absolutely spectacular and is a must watch. And some of it's kind of, you sort of have to just sit through a little bit. But I think Four's Fair. It was really, really good. Um, I would say it's the best musical I've seen all year. I've seen two. <laughs> and this yeah. is the better one. Well, this you've actually only seen one this year, so... Ah. ah, got you there. Yeah, you yeah. did. Nice shit. Yeah. 2023. Fuck. Yep. <laughs> Getting old. Yeah. So uh, you. I'm kind of I'm torn in terms of I think it's a four. I was kind of tossing up between a 3.5 and a four, but I, I think a okay. four. 
I'm going to have to agree with you on a four. Like yep. it's it's very very good. It's just yeah. it's it's long. It is long. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, like it's. Besides that, the songs are great. The design, mm-hmm. the atmosphere, trench balls are awesome. Like absolutely totally. great performance. Yeah, I reckon they missed out in the four point five. I just I don't know. You can't sell me yeah, on, on her singing. I don't mm. know. I just whatever. I think if you're a fan of the original, this is definitely like just to see a different adaptation. This is definitely worth watching. Like you say, Trunchbull, every fucking scene with her is amazing. It's yeah. worth worth watching just for her. Yeah, she was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. And yeah, let's move on to a little bit more of a yeah a, a mind twisting thing. And because mm. my pronoun well pronouncing words and especially when I don't get anything here either especially when they're names of different countries I yeah i'm going to struggle I'm massively <laughs> so i'm going to let you present it because i need to change oh, don't. my headphone battery because it's going oh, sure me. so okay, it's, good, okay. it's good timing real professionals Ready? here go now sure um well I was going to read out the synopsis, and then I realized actually the synopsis for the for the movie version that came out in 2021, live action. But I'll read it anyway. Um, a middle aged loser, who by the way is like 26, so I don't necessarily know he's middle aged. Otherwise, I'm fucking old. A middle aged loser travels in time to his school years, and in order to save the love of his life from future doom, he must become the leader of a dreaded school gang. Um. So the movie starts following this quote-unquote loser. Um, And by the way, I hate when they simply are like, he's a loser. And then they just say, oh, he's a virgin. Oh, he doesn't have a girlfriend. Hasn't had a girlfriend since he was a kid. Um, Instantly because he doesn't have a girlfriend, he's a loser. Like, is that really how we decide someone is a loser? Uh, Anyway, so he we start with him as a 26-year-old or whatever. He gets pushed. We see like a hand come up behind him. He gets pushed onto like a train track. And as his life flashes back before his eyes, he's more or less teleported to him. Uh, as they, they say, he's in second year of middle school. So I think like our year nine or something. Um, and he starts reliving this moment in his adolescence where he reckons he peaked. Uh, and he starts spending time with his, with his friends and he's hanging out with his friends and whatnot. And as his friends, um, we follow that story, he get, they get into a fight. He starts to get beaten up, et cetera, et cetera. He then meets this kid who he saves from getting more or less mugged from like other school bullies. Um, and it turns out this kid, for some reason, when they shake hands, is the link between teleporting him to the present and the future. Oh, sorry, the present and the past. And it turns out this kid is the sister of <laughs> the girl that he was dating in high school. And it turns out in the future, she dies by getting hit at some sort of like festival thing, hit by a car randomly. Um, I don't think they ever said what sort of festival or anything that it was. It was just, it was a crime. There was a car and a truck accident. It was never really yeah. explained how she died. Yeah, that's what that's something else I'm really confused about. I guess is like, why can't they just go to her and like they, when when um I'm I'm gonna get all the names wrong, but when we, our main character, uh, Takamichi, when Takamichi met, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> <laughs> when he met um, his girlfriend's Naoto. When he met his girlfriend's brother, Naoto, who unlocks the ability to time travel, he straight up tells Naoto, you're going to die in 12 years. Make sure you don't die. And then we flash forward to them back in the time where he was going to get hit by the train and all of a sudden, miraculously, he wasn't. And Naoto's like, oh, yeah, I made sure I didn't die. Why can't they do the same thing with her? Why can't they just tell Hinata straight up, or Hina, straight up, you're going to die in 12 years. Don't go to this fucking festival thing. Like, why um, wouldn't why wouldn't that be the end, simple answer? Yeah, I don't I don't think he knows exactly how she dies. I think that's the issue. Like, I think because there is that scene where he's 
uh, presented at the start where they were explaining, well, when he was watching the TV, that this guy died here. I don't know. I don't think they ever fully explained the details of how the sister died. Why can't they just say on the uh, random date, 12th of May, I forget what date they say, but on the 12th of May, don't leave your house. You're going to die on that day. Stay home. Don't go anywhere. Boom. She's saved. Like that's I mean, the end. I mean, yeah, that, that would solve a lot of their, their problems. <laughs> but, but I mean, remove that, remove that. Because there, there are a lot of plot conveniences. The fact that for some reason he can shake this kid's hand and, and travel in time hasn't been explained yet, but it feels like a massive fucking convenience. But he can only travel 12 years to that to day. day. Yep. Back. And is it at that time as well? In terms I think of... so. In terms of like, yeah. That exact PM, moment. I think. Yeah. So I feel like without the gangs, this show would not be as interesting. 100%. I feel like the gangs make it far more interesting in terms of how he has to navigate his way around all the different gangs. Like yeah, there seems to, that, yeah. yeah, there seems to be a number of like different interworkings of the gang. So like him and his mates were in their own little sort of gang. They formed their own. And then yeah. as they, Early. well, yeah, essentially they mm. were, they had their own gang mm. and then they were like, we're a gang, you know, like as you're younger, you think you're invincible. So they go front up to was his cousin. His cousin was like bragging to yeah him that he was a rival school. Yeah, that he was part of higher up in a, a different gang, and then they mm. go and meet the those guys, which are third years or something. Yeah, third years. Yeah, and then they just they get the crap beat out of them. Yep, and that all reveals that obviously that was his turning point in terms of where his downfall in life happened because mm -hmm. after that he moved that fight, away yeah and was like then never quite the same and always yeah, i'm a bit of a coward yeah yeah so i quite like the um i guess what would you call it redeeming sort of arc that he's going through like he's he wants to yep. not not be the coward and it's an interesting way i don't know mm -hmm. how well it's going to be written in terms of how they're going to go you're going back exactly 12 years to this day yes like it seems seems odd choice in terms of script writing and like what's it, happening to his body in the future is he on autopilot or is he like limp in a bed somewhere because he's at this point in this where we stopped he'd been back for a few days so is his body just limp in a hospital bed for Three days? Uh, What's happening? We don't know. Well, the first one, when he was pushed onto the train track, he obviously woke mm. up. Um, it like was a in coma a, or something. Yeah. yeah. Where the other times he was sent back by the brother. So I'm assuming the brother just looks after him because yeah. the, the brother knows. Like it's, you don't it's, know at this point. It's not explored, but I would assume the brother would look after the body. Mm. But in terms of traveling back is he already changing the timeline like if in terms of how time yeah. travel works like i know they haven't quite fully established any of those kind of laws but if no, you're going but... if you're going back in time don't when you change yes. one thing don't you have that yes. butterfly effect where you change everything which means but... like i'm wondering if like in back to the future where we see um marty's dad knock someone out and he gets you know some confidence in how much that drastically changes his life you know i'm wondering now if when a main character goes back to 12 years back to the present is his like you said is his life going to be drastically different is he going to be part of this gang all of a sudden like that's what i'm wondering now yeah so i don't know how they're going to work with that are they just gonna kind of ignore the the ripple effect that changing any of the timeline does because yes. he was he wasn't there for any of this part, was he? In terms of even in, after... initially, yeah, there was they were just slaves, as they as they called them. I thought initially after the fight, he was like pretty much packed up and moved. Or was there like a time period where he was just a uh, errand boy? Oh uh, yeah, maybe. I forget if that was before or after. Yeah, it could be because even that would be a big difference. 
going yeah. from being going from just up and leaving to being like a human slave to this these gang members very different so yeah he yeah. just like changes it up like i don't know where exactly they're going to focus on any of those changes but yeah. i do find when the higher up gang i can't remember what their names are but none of them yep yep so the two one with the shaved the shaved head the sides of the um, called him um dracon yeah i don't know he was like higher up in, yep. in, in something or other and then the other mm. guy with the longer hair who's on the and poster Euro. yeah yep. so they seem very quirky in terms of what they're going to be in terms of the catalyst of the story mm-hmm. so because there's that whole scene where the girl the sister who he's trying to save talks up back to him and he's like yeah but end of episode three and you're like yeah. oh no here we go things are going to kick yeah, off definitely and i kind of liked it like i felt pretty terrified for him I'm like you're mm-hmm. this, is, this is it you're going to a bad spot here yeah, you're going to ruin everything, but mm-hmm. it turns out that mm-hmm. they kind of like the old school standing up for... Yeah, uh, yeah. standing up for people who care about so yeah. mentality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is something that I really like, like you said, because we see so many anime where our character isn't a really good fighter, but he has so much heart and he just keeps fighting to the very end. And that's we see that all the time. He does have a um, bit of that, though. Yeah, definitely does. But like you say, I like that we need we, we need all these gangs these gangs hold the story together um the inner workings of the gang the fact they're going back and forwards in time how much how much like you said the ripple effect is going to carry through is intriguing enough to make me want to watch more um and while the conveniences are really annoying like all the time i'm seeing things i'm like well it doesn't really make sense but i guess it has to for the story um because of all those i'm a little bit tired of it but I am actually interested. Like after watching three, I was definitely keen to watch more. Like later in the day, I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't mind watching some more. Um, yeah, I'm I'm keen to see yeah. where this goes, and to see if they're able to tie it all together. Like mm-hmm. people do say it's pretty good in terms of where it goes, and looking at the higher um, IMDb like ratings, they're all in the. Mm-hmm. The lowest, I think, gets a 7, 7.8, okay. 7.9. Sure. So it looks like it, it holds reasonably well, but obviously we haven't seen that far ahead. So it's definitely an interesting sort of show to watch in terms of gangs and time travel. Like I haven't quite seen anything quite like that in terms of... No, it's ha- definitely having, unique. <laughs> ...having both in there. I do yeah, like sure. how he's not like a really good fighter and there's yes. no point where he even attempts to get better at it. There's no montage no. of him like practicing striking or getting like a martial arts trainer or anything. He just literally stands there and gets beaten. Go like, he goes yeah. in the fight club and gets knocked out in the first punch and like they yeah. just berate him for it. And then he just challenges the, the kingpin of the fight club. And yeah. Literally just holding on. <laughs> to like consciousness but mm-hmm. and then comes in last minute and saves it yeah yeah so there are still cool moments like if, if they're pretty powerful that moment where he gets come by the the main two blonde guys come in and sort of save the day um it felt a little bit too a little bit too easy <laughs> <laughs> but like they say it makes sense you know he's standing up for what he believes in mm. anyone can learn how to fight but not everyone has can stand up for what they believe in or then of those who matter or whatever he says. Yeah. Um yeah, it was nice. So I'm I'm definitely keen to see more, see where it goes. Yep. But yeah, I'm just not for sure me, how uh, the time travel is going to go. Yeah, I'm hoping that it has a big ripple because that's what I come to expect from these movies. If you if you're going to do time travel, there are certain rules you stick to, and that's sort of one of them, the butterfly effect. Um, so I'm, they need to do it, otherwise they've lost credibility. I reckon. Yeah, a lot of the um, media I've seen has had like Nazi regime symbols and stuff. So I'm really wondering if there's going to be some like time manipulation stuff, and the Nazis are in power at one point. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, behind me on my cover art that I picked, 
actually has one on the jacket. So I didn't yeah, realize that at the start. So. <laughs> it looks... I was going to point it out, but I was like, mm, I'll wait yeah. until, until later. <laughs> yeah. Fun text, so, fun text. That's, that's, that's why I'm in front of it right now. Yeah, but... <laughs> curious what happens there for sure. Would you recommend people to watch it? Uh, so far, yeah. So far, it's a three and a half for me. Um, yeah. I'm intrigued enough to want to watch more, but it's nothing exciting yet. But it, I think it has possibility for excitement. <laughs> yeah, mine's a mine's a three. Like I would recommend mm-hmm. it, but there's nothing quite. I guess episode three was really good. I quite like three. Yeah. It felt like it was the the building episode. Obviously, sure. one was your establishing, and then two was kind of like. Mm, more characters yeah yeah you've lost me slightly but then three Mm. definitely had more of that all right here we go you're building to something that was the grab yeah yeah i'm concerned that it's 25 episodes like only well i think there's more no i think that's that's season one just i don't know i don't know how they're going to stretch it for so Mm -hmm. long like i would have assumed it would be about 12 12 okay. 13 but we'll see how it goes i'm just there's a live action movie too i'm like i'm interested in watching after okay i didn't know there was a live action but that'd be cool. yeah wow all right interested. So i'm assuming it's quite popular then yeah i mean it must yeah. be for for a japanese remake they do yep. that for like the, big, the bigger things for sure yeah Anyway, wrap us up, boy. Anyway, we got some big things coming to you next week. So we are going to go see Avatar, The Way of the Water. So Woo. yay, they can see if we yeah, can make awesome. $2 billion. And we will be bored for three hours. Hmm, yeah, that's that's the it's only long. downfall. I have Fucking heard long. the uh, frame rates are like, filmed differently. Oh, I guess it's a, it's a little bit of a mess in the frame rate department. But yeah, right that's, right. that's what you get when you playing with all the new technologies then mm-hmm. we're looking at the new horror film called megan or mm-hmm. megan however you want to say it i know i watched the trailer and they said megan so i'm gonna run with megan cool. um that's, megan. that's the killer doll ai doll yeah creepy yeah, yeah. looking thing whatever it is I've seen some stuff on tiktok about it yeah yeah and then kaleidoscope which is the it's on netflix isn't it it is Netflix. It is, yeah. Yeah. So it's Netflix is one where you can watch it in almost any order you like, besides you mm-hmm. have to watch White Last. So you can watch any oh, other episode. Right? Okay. Yeah. You can watch any episode in any order besides White. That needs to be your last one. And then apparently the story all comes together still. Okay. Wait, Do we very... want to watch like the first three on the list? Um, no, we'll pick a color and we'll tell you guys next week what colors we picked. So, I think but we're going to be... this, this is your pick. So, you pick the first color, I'll pick the second color, and then you pick the third color. Oh, my god, we're running out of time. This is too much pressure. No, no, we'll talk about off screen. It's fine. Oh, okay, it's fine. Makes more sense. But that's that's the <laughs> that's the system we're going to run with. So, Lawson is cool going to pick two, two colors, I'll pick the middle color. And then we will talk about it next week. So make sure you guys go and watch everything. And yep. if you would like any merchandise, the Ryman TVs, or you'd like any merchandise made, let us know, send them through, and yep. we will get them sorted for you. And if you got know anyone at Under Armour that really wants to, you know, sponsor us as well, it's the first one I haven't worn any Under Armour in, I reckon. Yeah, we got to yeah. support your own merch. I mean, I think I hope yeah. Under Armour understand. Yeah, well, I do have Under Armour shorts on, so, you know. There you go. Show yeah. us. doesn't count if you don't show us. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. you got to show this. give them oh. what they want. Is it what you want oh, or what count. I want? Oh, that shirt looks so nice. Doesn't it? It's yeah. Rama TV. And it's like a really nice fabric. Under, Under Armour. There they are. There There's they the are. shorts. See? Yep. Yeah, got the quad up. Get around it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, the quads. Yep, they're big quads. Big quads. Anyway, um, you know what to do. Make sure you uh, tell everybody. Please, their ear holes. Tell your friends. Yep, you said ear holes last earlier, didn't you? Yep. Yep. Fill their ear holes <laughs> with, with movie reviews, <laughs> movie reviews, and everything yeah. else. Yep. <laughs> movie talks. Movie talks. Tell your friends. Bing bada boom. Love yous. Bye.